and welcome to worship. As always, all the words that are on the screen are invitations for you to participate in worship with us this morning, either out loud with the people whom you are with or in your hearts. And so let us begin by traveling into the Jordan. Our service begins with our call to worship. When the way is difficult and dangerous, let us still choose what is good and just. When evil comes to break us down and break us apart, let us still choose to carry on with each other. When power from on high strikes fear in our hearts, let us still choose the courage to persist. For we know that the love and power of God which abides in us will not be overcome. Amen. Let us worship holy God. Studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown. Good Lord, show me the way. And so I invite you as we stand on these edges of the water to join me in confession. God of justice, God of compassion, God of sacred and scandalous ways, we still have so much to learn. By your grace, we have come to know love more deeply. By your grace, we have been guided through the valleys of death. By your grace, we have been saved from the lies of destruction. But still we struggle to trust you. Still we are afraid. Still we are hurt. Still we are weary. Still we betray you. So we come to you right now doing the only thing we can, confessing it all, the whole messy and tender truth of who we are. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us for reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for carelessness with the fruits of creation. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. My beloved, I invite you to gather what you have now for your remembrance of baptism. So as we have confessed our sins in the life of repentance, we come now to remember who we have been claimed to be in the life of the water. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way.
Today, as we stand at the edges of the water, the waters of the Jordan, the waters of our baptisms, the waters of repentance, the water that fills our bowls, we will promise one more time to love and support each other, working together to resist the evil, injustice, and oppression in all its forms that lives within us and around us. Today, we proclaim boldly that we will remember that the love we encounter through these waters cannot be undermined by bigotry or hate or exclusion or injustice. Today, we proclaim that these family ties cannot be broken and that no one and nothing has the power to separate us from God. Today, we proclaim that these waters, that through these waters, we are set free to love wildly, to be with and for each other, to claim who we are, to be what God has called us to be, to turn away from everything that destroys. Yes, today, God of life and love, through the gift of water, we will proclaim the miraculous things you do the love that is restored by you, the possibilities of new life that emerge from you, and the forgiveness that is offered by you. And we will remember our baptisms for today, tomorrow, and always we are yours. And so I invite you, if you have a bowl of water in front of you, to dip your finger in it and to make a cross on your forehead and to say these words, I am God's beloved. My beloved, you have confessed the truth of who you are and been reminded once again of God who knows you and calls you to be. You have passed through the waters from death to life. You have been given peace. And so I invite you to share that same peace and life with one another, saying, The peace of Christ be with you always. Our service for this morning continues with the readings. This reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, a formless void an inky blackness covering the face of the deep, and a wind. God's very spirit swept over the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from darkness. God named the light day, he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. Word of God, word of life. In our pain, our blue, our beautiful, our hard, our messy, our ugly, our struggles, and our joys, God is with us. God accompanying us, God alongside us. God amid us, God among us, God beside us, God by us, God including us, God near us, God plus us, God upon us, God as companion to us, God side by side us, God in the thick of us, in the thick of our humanity, in the middle of this weary world, God is with us, in the gift and in the muck and mire of real life, we are called to be present, to be in the flesh with one another. 
accompanying others, alongside others, amid others, beside others, by others, for others, including others, near others, a companion to others, side by side with others, in the thick of others. With us, us with others, God with the world in the thick of the beautiful and the messy, in that a weary world rejoices. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Mark, the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and as they confessed their sins, were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama to whom I'm a mere stagehand will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river with water, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky torn apart and God's spirit like a dove came down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice. You are my son, my beloved, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. And so this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so grace and peace to you, my beloved, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So just in case you missed it, in all the events of this past week, Wednesday we as the church officially entered the season of Epiphany. A season of revealing, of discovery, of realization, of disclosure. A season where that veil that hangs between heaven and earth gets torn in two, to use the language of Mark from this morning. And we get to see more clearly, if only for a little while, who God is and who this world is too. And see, we did on Wednesday. Some of us in horror, some of us in disbelief, some of us in sadness, some of us in shock and grief, some of us in a mix of excitement and wonder, and some of us with the understanding that what was revealed in those venerated halls of the Capitol is nothing more than a visible manifestation of what has been here all along from the beginning, just bubbling away right below the surface. Yes, Wednesday we saw. We saw one more time that this, that all of this is broken. That we are, in the words of the confession many of us have known and used from childhood, says that we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. That again and again through our thoughts and words and deeds, we have chosen to walk the way of death, the way of hate and anger and evil and greed. That we have forgotten to act, to be the people God calls us to be as beloved, beautiful children. And that more than any of that, we have not loved our neighbor as much as we have loved ourselves 
our security, our greatness, our success, our ideals and values and beliefs. And God knows the truth is we cannot free ourselves from any of it. No matter how hard we try, yes, fear or hurt or grief or even storming the Capitol may change our behavior for a little while, may scare us enough to watch what comes out of our mouths or our fingers for a day or maybe two, may even threaten us and our perceived security and safety and control enough to make us promise to be good and go out into the streets of this world or the internet screaming for justice. But the truth of the confession, the truth it reminds us of, the truth that drew all those people from around the area, from Judea and Jerusalem to John in the wilderness, is that none of that, none of those things, our grief or our hurt, actually changes our hearts. For that kind of change, that kind of heart-changing, life-changing from the inside out kind of change, well, that takes truth, takes promise, takes more than what we tell ourselves or what the empires and herods of this world promise is true. Yes, that kind of heart change, that kind of life of repentance, well, it takes God takes the God who reaches into the graves we have dug for ourselves and the ones we have dug for our neighbors, no matter how deep, no matter how dark, no matter how much they stink like hate and fear and death, and that God doesn't stop reaching until he finally reaches us until he finally reminds us of who we are, of who he promises that we are from the moment the waters of our mother's wombs rinse across our heads. Yes, that kind of life change takes the God who knows what it is like to bring about new life from the midst of death and destruction and desecration and defamation. And luckily for us, John tells us that kind of God is coming, is right here, right up to the riverbanks where we are standing this morning. No, we won't be worthy enough, as one of our translations of this text says, to untie the thong of his sandals, but it will not matter. Because when he comes, when God comes, he will see us. And not just see us standing there, but epiphany kind of see us. The kind of seeing that looks deeper, that reveals what is underneath. And this God, when he comes after he sees us, well, he will tell us the truth. All of it. The good, the bad, the ugly. He will tell us about our privilege and how we have used it to abuse and neglect the most vulnerable among us. He will tell us about our love of security and success and being right. He will tell us about the hate that sometimes obviously and sometimes not finds its ways into the cracks of our hearts. He will tell us about how easily we are threatened by the people whose spark of God is so different from our own. He will tell us about how much we love to categorize people and divide people and split them into groups of us versus them. He will tell us how much we love the identities we have created for ourselves and how we cling to them. He will tell us how, no matter how much we deny it, that our own welfare or the welfare of our families always trumps the welfare of the one who is walking in the shadows right across the street. Yes, he will tell us of our love of money, of power, or the people who promise all those things that are not of the kingdom, like being first or greatest or most admired. He will tell us how often we have missed his presence in the world because we did not dare to listen or to see or demand justice until it was just about too late. Yes, he will come and he will tell us the truth. He will tell us all these things. And then, well, he'll tell us the rest. That who we are, who we have been created to be is beautiful, 
is beloved, is worthy to behold. He will tell us that we have been washed in the waters and that that has imprinted us to his heart. He will tell us how he doesn't just forgive sins, but forgets them. He will tell us how inside of us lives some part of his very spirit, his divine spark, his image. He will tell us how he has entrusted us to care for one another and this world he has made. He will tell us that our vulnerability and fragility is exactly what makes us strong. He will tell us that who we are cannot be defined by anyone else or even by our sin. He will tell us not to worry. That if he cares for the plants and the trees and the birds of this world with every fiber of his being, how he must care for us as well. He will tell us his yoke is easy. That when we find ourselves lost or broken or hurt or sad or hungry or thirsty, that that is exactly where he will be pouring out blessings beyond what we can count or even imagine. Yes, he will tell us that truth and he will remind us that all of that is not just true for you and for me, but for our neighbors too. And chances are that when he does, we will never be the same. Yes, we will still be in bondage to sin, as our confession says. Yes, we will still do and not do all the things in this world that matter. Yes, we will still not always love our neighbor, but we, we will be free. Free to be people of the water, people of hope people of courage, people of justice, people of love, people of freedom, people of good news, people whose bodies and hearts willingly break open to change this very world, who willingly dig into the graves that are around us to pull out whatever scraps of life we can. So my beloved, my beloved broken and beautiful people, my beloved sinful and saintly people, my beloved people with epiphany vision, my beloved people whose hearts have been replaced with the very heart of God. Hear the good news that on this day, while the world may be broken and full of sin, and while we may be that way sometimes too, the good news is that this isn't all of who we are. It isn't all of who we are invited to be. For on this day, yes, on this day and on this river bank, God is revealing that who we are is people meant for resurrected life. So thanks be to God for the freedom and gift of our baptisms. Amen. Our service for this morning continues with our hymn of the day, Drive Out the Darkness. Come, oh come, be our light. Drive out the dark. that we have known every valley will be raised the ancient ruins will be remade come oh come be our light drive out Sword. 
will be melted in the flame to be used for gardening. Come, oh, come, be our light. Drive out the darkness. Come, Jesus, come. In the emptiness of grief, through the night of suffering, in watching in the tears, God a comfort, oh, be near, come, oh, come, be Drive out the darkness, come, oh, come, be a light. Drive out the darkness, come, and all the violence, come, do not. Silent, come, cling to your promise, come, you break all injustice, come, Jesus, And so I invite you to join me as we affirm our faith. We believe God is love, and from love all things are born. No creatures or creation falls outside of God's eternal embrace. We believe forces of domination and destruction, control and greed, prejudice and violence pervade our lives, seeking to turn us against one another against the earth and against the spirit of the liberating Christ. We believe we depend on God, the remembrance of our ancestors, the courage of the prophets, and the wisdom that can only flow from the margins in order to grow in love. We believe in the power of God to make what seems impossible possible, we believe in the good news that sets captives free. We believe in proclaiming the truths that unsettle unjust power and encourage collective liberation. And we proclaim these things in order that we might learn to live them. We proclaim these things that we might grow in understanding. We proclaim these things in love for all our neighbors in hunger for justice, and in steadfast practice of our faith. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers, and as always, I invite you to type your prayer requests in the comments of this video. And so called through the water and the word, we pray for all who long to hear God's voice. for the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. For the well-being of creation. For peace and justice in the world, the nations and those in authority, the community. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, lonely. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. For our prayers.
for the faithfully departed. O oh God, you have called us by name, chosen us by your spirit, and claimed us with your water. Receive our prayers today, for only you alone can hear us. Amen. And so I invite you now to gather what you have for communion. And together, let us pause to offer all of who we are and all of what we have to God. Beloveds, we come to our tables because we are claimed. We come to our tables because we are still learning what togetherness means, because we long for liberation, because we thirst for justice, because we know the need, the fierce and urgent need for grace and freedom and nourishment in our bones. We come to our tables because these are not our tables, but Christ's tables. And we are invited to bring our whole lives to these places. Because we remember on the night he was arrested, while the powers and principalities of empire and supremacy and dominance raged, Jesus gathered people. He took bread, broke it, shared it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, the bread of new life, the crumbs of grace. Share this and remember. Then Jesus took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks for it, and said, Take and drink. This is the power of my life, blood, the salve of salvation, the cup of blessing. Share this and remember. And so we do. We remember, we offer, we receive, we share in the feast, we pray the prayer of Jesus. Because we need each other, we need this sacrament, we need this grace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so taste and see that the Lord is good. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And before we get to our final blessing, I'm going to get Adam up here to join us uh, this morning and just a couple quick announcements for you. Um, I passed out Star Words, not Star Wars, but Star Words last week. If you want one and you didn't get one, please feel free to message me at some point today. And also coming up, I'm going to have more information available about it. But Lutheran Charities is doing a virtual wine tasting night. And so I'll have information coming up for you guys about all of that. But thank you for joining us. And if you want to join us for the coffee hour after worship, you are welcome to do so. So let's get Adam up here this morning. Hello. Say hi. I got my helper here. And we're going to do one of our favorites again. This is Shine Jesus Shine. Uh -oh. Ready for the signal? No, no, no. no. What? Oh, for the oh, thing? Okay. Okay. Oh, let's do it from the beginning. Here, I think we're going to get the back. Here, let's turn it around. All the All the time. 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 All the 
Yeah, wait for Leo. Leo. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, let's yeah. have a big song and read it real loud. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Shut up, please. Shut up. Let's live with the Father's glory. Let's be with the Father's glory. Forever. Our service for this morning then continues with the blessing. When they say you are alone, these waters say you are family. When they say you are too broken, too damaged, too wounded, these waters say beautiful child, beautiful. When they say you are not worthy, not beloved, not enough, these waters say enough, beloved, enough. When they say you are too addicted, too other, too alien, too far gone, these waters say, home neighbor, welcome home. When they say we could sell these waters and turn a profit, these waters say we are the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Atlantic, the waters of the Great Lakes. We are the waters of your mother's womb, the waters of repentance, the waters of your new baptismal life, and we are free. When they say fear, these waters say life, hope, blessings. Amen. And so go in peace, my beloved, remembering who you are in the waters. And thank you for worshiping with us this week. I cannot wait to see you all Way again soon. In the water. Way Children wait in the water. Gods are gonna trouble the water. See that band all dressed in white. Gods are gonna trouble the water.
The little looks like the Israelite. God's a gonna trouble the water. Ooh, wait, wait in the water. Oh, wait, wait in the water, children. Ooh, wait in the water. God is gonna trouble. God's a gonna yeah. trouble the water. Oh, see that band all dressed in red. God's a gonna trouble the water. Ooh, it looks like the band that Moses led. God's a gonna trouble the water. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. Wait in the water. Oh, wait. wait in the water. God is gonna trouble. Yes, he will. The water. Oh, 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 Deliverance in the water. Gonna trouble the water. My God is gonna trouble, gonna trouble the water. Gonna trouble the water.